Hetzner pulled up here. And as you can see, we have two hosts. We have my old one and my new one. What we're going to have to do is go ahead and place that new host in recovery mode. So we go ahead and we click that. We we'll click rescue mode. And then through rescue mode, we set our keyboard layout and we activate the rescue system. And there we go. Take note of your rescue password. By the time this video comes out, this won't really matter. So you can try to, I guess, log into my Proxmox's rescue mode. Good luck with that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to activate rescue mode on your Proxmox Hetzner. We've already done that. After that, you're going to want to go to reset and you're going to want to execute a automatic hardware reset. And what that does is force the server to reboot. You'll go back to rescue mode. You'll go back to your SSH client. In my case, that is Bitvise. You'll go ahead and you'll try to log in as root. So it seems like the server isn't quite up yet. So let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, and as you can see, it's asking us to accept the new host key. So we'll go ahead and we click that. Now we're back at the rescue mode of our new server. Look at that. Remember, we're still on step six, spinning up our new host. It seems like a simple step, but the hardest things in life are often the simplest things. Got some BS wisdom right there. Ah, ah, sounded good, didn't it? Now let's get the simple process of getting this server spun up. Ah, simple. It is simple, actually. You just have to break it down into about 30 or 40 sub steps. And then you go through those step steps one step at a time. And then at the end, you have a completed project. Would you believe me if I told you I made these videos for a very selfish reason? Oftentimes, I set up stuff like this. And I'll spend weeks or months getting it set up and configured. And then I'll leave it running. And about a year or two later, I'll come back to change it or try to get it spun back up or upgraded. And have no idea what I was doing, where I left off or how I even got the results I achieved. And I'll sit there being like, obviously, I did it once before so I can do it again. But I realized that there was a problem. And that problem was time. Yes, I was wasting time thinking about the same thoughts again and again and again. Such a waste of mental resources. Such a waste of time. So, why not record myself making these videos? And then why not share it with you? I figured something out. And maybe you guys can figure out a better method. In which case, we all benefit. So if you guys figure out a better way to spin up ZFS on a Proxmox remote host, let me know. I'd be very interested. So, first thing we do is we list our directory. And then we print our working directory which is root. Then after that, we can do a wget-o proxmox.iso and then we want to type in the link to the latest version of the proxmox ISO. We're going to give that a couple minutes to download. Cool. After that, we'll want to list our devices. So we do a quick ls block. As you can see, we have two NVMe drives. That's going to be important later. Next, we're going to type in a command. So this command is going to be used to launch our virtual machine. And it is going to mount our Proxmox ISO. And then once that Proxmox ISO is mounted, it is going to mount the two NVMe drives. And then it's going to give us a VNC session for us to access that virtual machine. We're going to go into that virtual machine and then we're going to install Proxmox from there. A convoluted way to do it. Uh, I'm going to try to include some diagrams, pictures, tell better than showing, but we'll see how that goes. We now have to proceed with the next step, which is spinning up a new Proxmox host. It's been about 10 months since I made that first video, and I think I'm going to have to cut this section out of the video and release it as its own thing, just because the steps to install Proxmox are a little bit different. So we'll see how that goes. Step one to getting your Hetzner host spun up on Proxmox with UEFI 
is to place your host into rescue mode and then to reset your host. In my case, I've already placed it in rescue mode. And then you go to reset. And I've already reset it, but you would click execute automatic hardware reset and click send. Once your host is successfully reset, you'll go ahead and you'll connect to the host using SSH. We've already going to go ahead and do that. Once you've SSH'd in, we're going to use wget and we're going to download the latest Proxmox ISO. In this case, the latest Proxmox ISO is Proxmox 8.2. I went ahead and already got the link. So what we're going to do is going to wget.o and then we're going to do prox, let's see. We're going to do pve.iso and then we're going to place that in there. And there we go. As you can see, we're now downloading pve.iso. Let's wait for this to finish downloading. And then we are going to boot up this host in UEFI mode. And then we're going to install Proxmox via that method. Once we've downloaded the Proxmox ISO, you can see we got it downloaded right here. We're going to enter a very complicated command. Not really complicated, but long. Let's break it down. We have Quemu x86, so we're using Quemu to boot a virtual machine. We're giving that virtual machine 4 gigs of RAM. We're giving it a USB keyboard. We're telling it to boot from the PVE ISO we just downloaded. We're telling it to pass through the two NVMe drives in a raw format, and then we're pointing it to VNC0. There is one extra thing we have to add to this to ensure that we can boot compared to well, there is one extra thing we have to add to this to ensure that it boots properly and installs via UEFI compared to the old install method, which uses just the BIOS only. All right, and we now have Proxmox spun back up. Let's go ahead and continue. We go through to install Proxmox and we let it run through. You can see it's booting up. And this startup is a little different. Let's see. So right now it's getting its IP address from the recovery modes DATP server. And then we are in and we can just scroll down and hit I agree. And then we can hit options. And we just run through the install real quick. Of course, we're doing all of this for ZFS. Choose a ZFS format. You have two disks, so you can either do RAID 0 or RAID 1. I myself am a fan of RAID 0. You only live once, boys. And the best solution to unstable storage is good backups. So, next. And of course, we're in the United States, not Iran. And then New York is our country or rather our time zone. And New York is our time zone. Choose English. We of course set our password. we hit next and then we set our host then we define our host name here and this is where it's important where we have to come through and we have to define our interfaces so the first well this is important because we have to define our IP address so go ahead and just set your IP to your Hetzner IP In my case, that IP was 37.27.118.169 with a subnet of 16. And I said the DNS to Cloudflare, because that is my DNS provider. And then, of course, we set the gateway. And to get the gateway, you're going to have to go to Proxmox. To get the gateway, 
And to get the gateway, you're going to go back to Hetzner, go to IPs, scroll here. And our gateway is 118.191. So we'll go back to the host. Again, that gateway is 118.191. Um, so you go back to Hetzner, you go to IPs, you let that load, you'll hover over your IP address, and you can see our gateway is 118.129. So you go back to your VNC session. And you type in your gateway. So that is 37.27.118.129. And then you go ahead and you hit next and you hit install. So the Proxmox host is done installing. And I'm going to paste these commands at the bottom of the video. But basically, we're going to run Quemu again. Same command, but this time we're going to boot from those two drives. So here it is. And let's walk through it. Again, we're starting Quimu with 8 gigs of RAM, US keyboard. We're enabling KVM. We're passing through the UFI BIOS file. We're giving it the host CPU, and then we're giving it those two NVMEs. And then when we boot this up, and we go back into Proxmox, we hit continue. And the reason we're booting back into Proxmox one more time before rebooting the entire host entirely is because we have to change our network interfaces file. And it's a simple change, which is root. Uh, hold on. There we go. So this is the VNC session of our Proxmox host. And we just log back in. We type in root. We log in like normal. We go to nano at C interfaces. Let's see, network interfaces. And there we go. As you can see, our interfaces are properly set, but the actual interface ID is going to be something completely different. So if we would boot it into our host initially, we would have gotten our IP and we save that. In our case, our IP is either, uh, in our case, our interface ID is either ef 0 or ENF. 6s0. So we'll start with ETH0 and see if that lets us boot up and then we'll come back in a few minutes and test it. So in the VNC session we just set this to ETH0. Then of course you set this to ETH0 and then you reboot. Right, and then after that, what you can do is open a command prompt. So let's do that real quick. And in this command prompt, let's see here. So something's happening. It looks like it was up for a couple of seconds there. And then it died. So we probably got our interface ID wrong. Time to reboot and try again. And look what we have here. We have that Proxmox host spun up. So it was not the EFO interface, but it was the ENSO interface. And I'm going to log in and show you guys. I had to do that off screen. I figured since I was repeating stuff, it wasn't worth recording. But essentially, you go ahead and you log in. And as you can see, we now have the new PVE Hertz server spun up, right? And when we go to network, you'll see the network that it advice is that is attached is ENP660, which was the alternative interface name. So you guys are going to want to use the alternative interface name to assign your network interface and then reboot, and it should come right up. 